Here is the next testing video and there is a little headwind. I've decided I don't like wind as it makes controlling the helicopter harder. Psychologically it has a negative effect because you think you haven't progressed and perhaps you've even gone backwards. You find yourself in a stable hover and then the wind suddenly upsets things and if you're not very good, like me, at correcting the hover you end up putting it back down. So progress on this occasion isn't noticeable. I'll shut up now and let you watch the clip. Something I notice when pulling the helicopter across the field is the amount of drag from the extended poles. The grass is only 3 to 4 inches long and with the long poles 4 meters across I can see a run on landing possibly causing a dynamic rollover. If there's no forward speed then it's fine but it's definitely something to be wary of. I put on a bigger radiator fan. This one is 11 inches and the previous one was 9 inches diameter. The current draw on the bigger one is over 25 amps but below 30 amps and the draw on the smaller one is only 6 amps. With extra size comes extra weight adding over a kilogram. The battery also isn't being charged by the engine which I need to look into. The stator is only producing 3 to 5 volts AC at idle so perhaps the stator needs replacing. I found a price for a new stator and it's not cheap. Plus it only puts out a maximum of 5 amps which won't even keep up with a small fan. With another amp being used by the water pump and gauges, with no charging we can work out the battery life. With the large fan on during the last test, no improvement in flight duration resulted. I expected a significant increase, but this was not the case. I now need to investigate as to why. Is the electric pump providing the correct flow rate? Is the radiator big enough? Or is there something else? One thing I think will be causing a problem is the proximity of the coolant outlet to the exhaust. Of course, in a total loss coolant system, as in the outboard form, it wouldn't matter what temperature the coolant went back into the sea. This is going to be the next step and perhaps I can move it to the bottom of the cylinder head cover. But I of course need to make sure I'm not causing any part of the engine to run hot. Something I wonder about, should I ever get this far, is dissymmetry of lift in forward flight. This is where you have a headwind and this causes unequal lift on each side of the rotor disc. The advancing blade will have its velocity plus the headwind and the retreating blade will have its velocity minus the headwind. In a coaxial with teeter hinges this results in blade tips coming closer together on one end and further apart on the other. The same effect can be caused by a gust of wind and you can imagine the result if the blades ever collided. One way I thought to monitor the situation was to add a camera at the hub. It would hopefully provide the information on tip clearances. But I don't need to worry about that quite yet because I can't even hover it. Ha! If you ever wondered what the point of teeter hinges are, here are a few reasons for them. As mentioned, they prevent dissymmetry of lift tilting the helicopter. In a coaxial, they prevent gyroscopic forces acting upon the rotor shaft between the two rotors. And in a conventional, they reduce the rotor force on the rotor shaft during maneuvers. You'll notice the hinge isn't in line with the blades and is offset. This is called teeter undersling. The reason for this is that it allows the blade masses to horizontally align with the teeter bolt when in flight. This reduces vibration. Another reason for undersling is to reduce the Coriolis effect by keeping the blade masses at the same distance from rotation during rotor flap. There is so much to know about helicopter physics and I know very little in comparison to what there is to learn, but it is a fascinating subject in my opinion. Until next time.